Greetings! In today's episode about making paints, I want to address equipment and safety. I feel like I haven't properly talked about safety in the previous episodes and I want to fix that. I'll also detail all the tools I currently use so you can see what I've updated or changed from the previous videos. The very first thing I do when I set my equipment for work is to protect my workspace. I use this table for everything I do art-wise and I would prefer not to leave any scuff marks or extra dents in it. Then I put on both a breathing mask and safety goggles. These are at their most useful in the beginning of the mixing process, when the pigment can still easily get in the air. Even if I focus on non-toxic pigments, it's never a good idea to breathe them. I got both of these at the hardware store and they weren't expensive. Make sure the breathing mask is NIOSH certified and that the glasses protect the sides of your eyes too. I keep a box of nitrile gloves handy. Since I have very short fingers and the gloves don't fit well, working with these makes me lose a lot of dexterity. My solution is to not wear them when I work, but to actively avoid getting my hands in contact with pigments. If that happens, I wash it off immediately. However, when comes the time to wash all of the equipment at the end of a muling session, I'll wear gloves to protect my skin from the pigment I'm washing off. If you have protective gloves that fit you well, I suggest using them throughout the whole process. Another precaution I take before I start working is to make sure there are no cats in the room, then close the door. I also remove all food and drink. On with the crafting materials. I use gum arabic, either in a water-based solution or in very fine powder. I also use honey from local beekeepers, as ethical as I can get. Next are a bottle of distilled water and a smaller one of glycerin. It's important the water is distilled so it doesn't carry anything that could affect the paint. Denatured or rubbing alcohol is handy to have as it can help to wet some pigment or to clean residual stains from your work surface. And finally, pigment. The next category of material is the tools used to measure, mix or test the paint. I have spatula knives, a good synthetic inexpensive brush, measuring spoons, empty pans or half pans, and some paper to swatch out the paint as I work on it. I keep an old towel especially to dry out my equipment after I wash it clean of paint leftovers. The most basic set of tools you saw me use so far, a ceramic plate and a grinding tool made with a spice jar, blue tack and a decorative glass marble. This works really well for very small batches of paint. It's super inexpensive and easy to store away. I recently upgraded though and got a glass lab and a glass muller. I will talk more about these two in the second part of this video. A last note about safety. If, like me, you do not have a very adequate studio or professional space for mixing paints, please stay away from pigments with heavy metals. Always protect your face and your skin Read the labels and precautions and never work close to food 
a food preparation area or with equipment also used with food. And always clean up your workspace well after you're done. The second part of this video is about preparing a glass slab and Euler for use. Chances are, when you get the glass slab, it's gonna be perfectly smooth. Both slab and Euler have to be worked with a powder called silicon carbide or carborundum, which is an abrasive. The idea is to roughen the work surface so that it can more efficiently grind pigment. I was given a small bag of the powder when I bought my Mueller. I didn't really know how to proceed, so I looked online. I found a site that described the process. It recommends starting with 1 8 of a teaspoon of abrasive and working it into a stiff paste with distilled water. I then put the Mueller on the mixture and started the round motions. That's when it all went off the road. I'm gonna take a moment to describe what I spared you. The most cringeworthy sound I had ever heard. Think nails on a chalkboard, but through a very loud speaker. I struggled with the unbearable noise, trying to come up with a solution to lessen the loudness of it, until I remembered I have noise blocking ear protectors. Trust me, if you plan on doing this, make sure you protect your ears and your sanity by wearing ear protectors or earplugs. I proceeded by adding more abrasive and water and kept on working the Mueller. I checked my process by dropping water on the surface, then dabbing it up with a paper towel to see how frosted the glass was underneath. When it seemed to be good, I went and rinsed off all the abrasive. The glass was nicely frosted, so I figured everything was ready. Also, someone asked me about how noisy the process of grinding the paint can be. Glass on glass with nothing in between is not a very pleasant sound, but when there's a layer of paint, it doesn't make much of a sound. The paint makes the Mueller glide on the surface, so it's pretty much silent. One last thing. Today is your last day to enter my small giveaway, where you could win a set of three handmade paints in half pans. Check the description box for more infos. See you next time, have a great day!